Trinitron, a brand of CRTs released by Sony, well known for being a high quality type of CRT, mainly because of the use of an aperture grille and not a shadow mask. The aperture grille in combination with a 3-in-1 electron gun resulted in an easily patentable product for Sony. The name Trinitron was derived from the first part of Trinity, a union of three, and the last part of Electron Gun. The first Trinitron was released in April of 1968, and because of the unique patent Sony had for this type of CRT, combined with constant improvements meant that Sony could ask a premium for these televisions and computer monitors. Fast forward to 1996 and the patent expires, opening the door for competitors to use the technology and sell it at a cheaper rate, stopping Sony's ability to ask a premium. That wraps up my badly researched info on Trinitrons. Well, in this video we will look at how this Trinitron came into my possession. For that we need to go back to January of 2021, more than two years ago. This is a great example of the slow rate at which I make videos. So we are heading for Amsterdam by train. I always find it fun that a prominent landmark you pass from the airport to Amsterdam Central Station is the IBM building. In my opinion, this is the most IBM-ish building imaginable. It could have also housed a secret government agency. I believe it was built around 1975. As of 2023, IBM is supposed to build a new building next to it. Seeing this architecture, you will probably understand that we are nearing the city center of Amsterdam. As on most of my pickup trips, Bianca joined me. We arrived at Amsterdam Central and moved on to the humble metro we have there called the North South Line and picked up the Trinitron from what was clearly a student home. I brought a trolley and some rope and for some reason an old garbage bag. The journey home can begin. We carried down the Trinitron into the metro and this being 2021, mouth masks were still mandatory in public transport. I said goodbye to Bianca and thanked her for joining me and got on to the last train bringing me home. This type of train is called a Sprinter, and they were added to the fleet of the Dutch Railways in 2019. What makes this train special is the fact that they have not only a USB port for charging, but also a full-size plug. So then I realized that instead of waiting for the plugs at home to test this television, I could also do a quick test in this train moving at 140 km per hour. So there I went to plug it into the plug, and I could hear the high voltage. But there was nothing to see on the screen. Then I saw the channel 8 sign. After pressing a control switch of the VHS port, it also displayed a message in Dutch saying I needed to put in a VHS tape. I wish I had brought one, would be great to watch a movie in the train. I waved goodbye to the Sprinter and to 2021, back to 2023. So here is the TV. Normally I would not go for the silver look, but on this device I quite like it. So the model number is KV14FV1D. Looking at the serial number, this is definitely not a rare type of television. A sticker disclaiming something about show view. A plus in my opinion is the front panel composite in. On the back it is very boring with a SCART connector and RF in. I of course love the VHS part of it. On the front it has a bunch of switches for basic operations like stop, play, fast forward, rewind, etc. This array of buttons did not prevent me from going onto eBay and acquiring a Sony remote that is compatible with this television. It came all the way from the United Kingdom. What can I say about this remote? It is a remote. It has the standard buttons a remote has, added with the special switches for the VCR part. I can imagine what button you are thinking about while watching this video. One quick trip back to 2021, I tested the VCR part with a pre-recorded tape and it seemed to work perfectly. Let's unwrap this TDK HS240 VHS tape. I have a bunch of these still in the packaging. Let's put it in. I like the small animation it displays. I pressed the record button and immediately it recorded the items display on the screen. I was using an HDMI to composite adapter to connect my MacBook to the television. There's an apparent reduction in image quality on this recording, which is logical, of course. 
Let's move on to the main factor that I got this television for and the reason that these displays still can cost you quite some money. That is using them for vintage gaming. What better device to test that with than with the Sony PlayStation 1. This is one of my favorite retro consoles. The first game I loaded was GTA. On the case it says European version. Not sure what are the differences. The game is quite fun, but the controls are tough to get the hang of. Interesting how this is the basis of GTA 5, one of the most popular games ever. Moving on to a game that I love and is still so much fun to play, Crash Bandicoot. On this Trinitron the image looks very nice and it's very responsive and easy to play. So I'm going to continue playing Crash Bandicoot but we'll wrap up this quick video in which we took a look at how I got this Sony Trinitron. Thanks for watching. <laughs>